people? How are you doing? I hope you're having a damn good day. Welcome back to the channel. And today we will be doing Declan Rice's instructions for Arsenal and how I see him fitting into the team. I personally think there's two positions he plays in. One being obviously the number six role, the DM. I think he's probably better than Partey at that and that, therefore I think he will make that position his own. Maybe not at first, but I think eventually Declan Rice will be the out and out number six for Arsenal. But I can also see him playing as a bit more of a box-to-box -box role, the number eight, of course, um, the Granite Xhaka role from last season. Um, but we'll get into those instructions. But if you can, smash the like button down below, subscribe if you are new. Let me know what you rate this move as. Me personally, I'm in, I'm rating it a nine out of ten. That's, that's nine, nine little digits there. Um, only because, nothing on Declan Rice's side of things, but only because Arsenal might be giving up the likes of Partey and Granite Xhaka. I'm not... I'm not a fan of them tearing up a successful team from last season. I'm, I'm not. And I know Partey is leaving for personal reasons and Xhaka is leaving because he thinks it's time to leave, apparently. But I think they need to keep one of them. And if they do end up keeping Partey, I think it could be a 10 out of 10 signing. But we'll have to see how things go. Enough said. Let's hop into these instructions and let me tell you what you got to do to get the best out of Rice. Rice, baby. Oh, I'm terrible, man. As for Declan Rice... His defensive behavior, you're going to have it set on balanced. Of course, under David Moyes, it was more of a structured, rigid um, approach to the games, like very defensive. With Arsenal, of course, a much better attacking team will have more possession. So therefore, Rice as the number six will be allowed to express himself a lot more, which I am very much looking forward to. So you don't want him to be set on cut passing lanes or, or damn near tight marking. You want him to have a more balanced approach to it whether he needs to tightly mark Kevin De Bruyne or whether he needs to get in the face of a few passes and, and cut out um, and intercept passes and so on. You, you want him to be that shield um, in the back line and not be taken out all the time by a, a player that he's being forced to mark, you know? Um, and as for the attacking support, I've put it on stay back while attacking. And you might say, well, how can you say in one moment, oh, Declan Rice... He, um, he's going to express himself a lot more offensively with the ball, this and the other, and then say, oh, well, the, the DM, the number six, is going to be staying back while attacking. Well, one of his best attributes is being able to pick up the ball off the back line and drive it into the midfield, creating overloads in other little areas for other players to succeed in. I mean, we did see this from time to time at West Ham, but like I say, it was very, very limited. West Ham, super defensive, kick the ball, hoof it up, and pray that Mikel Antonio is running his ass off. But with Arsenal, you'll be able to do that. You'll be able to receive a pass from a Gabriel or Saliba or even a Ramsdale and create overloads by driving the ball manually into the midfield. So again, we're trying to recreate the best possible instructions to get the best out of Declan Rice. Am I right? I am, of course. But at the same time, you want him to be defensively sound and protecting the back four. And the best way to do that is to stay back while attacking. That's how I've found it. If you have a better suggestion, let me know down below. I'm always open to your comments, as per always. As for his interceptions, you don't want him to drain his stamina at all because draining stamina means there's lots of defensive holes and he cannot plug them if he's damn near on three stamina. So normal interceptions, you don't want him out of position as well because what I've noticed is when you are overly aggressive with interceptions, you tend to be drawn out here, be drawn out there. And like I say, he is the shield for the back four. You need him in position at all times. As for um, the defensive position, you want him to cover the wing, but set on default, of course. So he will drift from time to time left and right, potentially filling in for the likes of a Zinchenko who might be playing in the midfield, or a Ben White who may have been overlapping Saka and you know you, there might be a counter-attack. So you want Declan Rice to more or less plug the holes, fill the gaps, make sure it's still a defensively solid team um, from the back and then build forward from there. And then as for positioning freedom, I have him set to the deep line playmaker. Like I say, you want him to be more expressive with the ball, on the ball, um, and he can definitely do that. I think Declan Rice could potentially be better, controversial take, than a Rodri in a few years' time. Because I, I think going forward, his offensive game could be a bit cleaner, a bit better. Controversial take, smash the like button down below or the dislike button. Depends on how you view it. If you're a City fan, which there aren't many of, uh, let me know. <laughs> okay, and now the final position, the ultimate form, uh, Declan Rice as a box-to-box -box number eight. Now, essentially, he's got all the physical attributes to be a really, really good box-to-box -box player. And I, I do think he could really do well there, but I, I prefer him as a number six more. I mean, 
he was a centre back at one point. I mean, he could even still play as a centre back for Arsenal, but I don't think he will. So only two positions. Um, but as for the the box to box role, um, as for the attacking support, I have it set on balance because you don't want him to be able to just make forward runs and be out of position. You want him to be structured, sound, and helping out the likes of an Odegaard, a Jorginho, or even a Partey if he is played as a six from time to time. Um, you want him to not just mindlessly run forward or stay back and not be involved in the attack. You want him on a more balanced role. And I think Mikhail Arteta, if I'm basing it off of what Granit Xhaka was all about last season, where he would make the occasional burst into the box and score. I mean, we saw in the last game against Wolves, Granit Xhaka was in the box quite a bit. Um, and I think the same could be said for Declan Rice going forward in this position. As for the support on crosses, like I say, he is a big physical specimen of a human being. So... Him on balance makes the most sense because you don't always want him just being in the box waiting for the cross, waiting for the header because that takes out the likes of Jesus and Martinelli and potential Saka. Um, that takes them out of the equation. But from time to time, every now and then, you don't actually mind it. You, I think him as a deep-lying, charging, late-on-into-the-box type player in the number 8 role, of course, I think he could be really good. Um, and then, of course, you also want him to help Odegaard and Jorginho recycle possession around the box, be patient with the ball, wait for the, the final spaces to open up the team to crack, or obviously the opposition's team to crack, um, create opportunities for the likes of Martinelli, Saka and Jesus. Or even a potential, potential, we could do this guy next, um, Kai Havertz. Mm, that would be cool. As for the normal inceptions, well, as for the inceptions, it's on normal. Um, and then positioning freedom, I have it set to free roam. Now, for Saka... He, did, he made multiple overlapping runs of the, the, the left wing of like multiple times and he would like have that ability to just cut the ball across like a very sharp cut across the face of the goal and then there would always be somebody to tuck it home. Now, I don't think, I, I don't really see Rice in that role, but I do see him as being a bit more of a brute in the midfield, um, winning the aerial balls, collecting the ball, spraying it out wide to, to a Martinelli or to a Jesus and, and going from there. And I think having the positional freedom to do that, it, it will probably get the best out of him. And of course, he is a DM firstly, right? So he'll always have that innate ability to be defensively solid and then go forward with that. And I think free roam gets that the best out of him, in my personal opinion. And then as for the defensive position, it is set to cover wing, of course. When a Zinchenko or whoever you are playing as your left back, they decide to get forward, he will potentially drop into that left back role make sure it's a solid back four, very much like how he would do in the DM role. But because you're playing with a Jorginho, not another physical human being, you need your number eight to be a little bit more defensively solid, which is why I've gone with the Rice-Jorginho tandem in this aspect. So, I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, smash the like button. Again, I have said that so many times. Subscribe. Again, I've said that so many times. But I'm really enjoying doing these videos, and I hope you guys are too, um, or watching them at least. And... Um, until the next one, I hope you guys have a smashing damn day. I'm out.